my, tell, my coming out story and would I tell that. Uh, of course, my first thought was the night I did the deed. We figured that's when we came out. Now, I started coming out in first grade. I didn't quite know it, but that's when I first fell in love with my best friend, Margie Garris. They'll remember the name. <sighs> Heartthrob. Well, you know, school went on. I kept going on. And of course, I kept falling in love with my best friend. And if there wasn't a best friend to fall in love with, I fell in love with a young, really attractive female teacher. Okay. I mean, did you do this? Wow. And I didn't know what was going on, right? So I go to college. Now, this is a great place to come out, you would think, right? College. Well, I tried coming out two ways. Well, not really, but okay, one way. First way, and that was that was uh, my Jewish root, and I decided at the age of 18 that I really wanted to convert to Judaism, and I mentioned that to several other girls in the dorm, and one of them looked at me absolutely horrified, and she said, "Is your mother Jewish?" And I said, "No." Well, you can't be Jewish if your mother isn't Jewish. You can't. You just can't do that. Well, I was fairly crushed because I'd been on a spiritual journey for a good six years by that time. And uh, so I kind of let that go. And, um, you know, kind of fast forward a few years. Now I'm a junior. But the problem as far as my being a lesbian is concerned was that I was at one of the two top physical education colleges in the state of Pennsylvania. And even though the student body count at that point was something under 5,000, I'm positive there were at least 11,000 bull dykes on that campus. And they watched every move I made. And it terrified me. I mean, walk past their rooms in the dorm, the Playboy centerfolds are hanging on the walls. One woman I remember even had one on the ceiling above her bed. And she wore a lot of heavy, you know, jean material and combat boots and things like that. I did not want to identify with that. I was already in the closet. I looked for a deeper closet to get into. <laughs> and went into a closet inside that closet. <laughs> I was really in there. So I, of course, got married after college, because that's what you were supposed to do. Uh, and I had a good sense to keep going on for some degrees, and that kept me you know, a little bit out of my depression about being married to this man. It was perfectly fine, but mm, boring. <laughs> OK, that's another story. Uh, what, but, so fast forward, I'm 27, and the light's beginning to come on, finally, because I, of course, have fallen in love with my best friend for the umpteenth time. Only this time, she has fallen in love with me. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, my. Boy, did we do a dance around that. Finally, we stopped dancing. And that happened two weeks before my divorce was final. There are a couple of thoughts that went through my mind on that particular night. One was, oh, oh, this is what they're talking about. <laughs> this is why everybody's so excited about this. I didn't know before that. And then afterward, oh, well, I guess I've got to become the doctor I was supposed to marry. So it's quite, um, as you know, it was quite a life-changing uh, event. Now, fast forward a number of years, and I finally met uh, Rabbi Aaron and connected with Javi Reed, 
and completed my conversion. Hallelujah. And, uh, but you know, it's like I keep coming out. I mean, this is not a process, this is not a one night deal. This has been going on and on and on. And I've discovered it will probably continue going on. Most of the time, I don't even know it. I uh, remember a few years ago, young people were, and uh, I was talking with a woman that I had been uh, a co-teacher with years ago in the 70s. And uh, unbeknownst to me, the woman had put me on some kind of pedestal. I didn't know it until she introduced me to her husband who said, oh, you're Diane Ely. Oh, I've been hearing about you for years. <laughs> Blew me away. So in between services that young people were afternoon, we were chatting, just chatting, chatting. And I said something about my partner, she. I don't play pronoun names. And this woman looked at me and she said, Diane, what are you trying to tell me? What are you trying to tell me? I'm not really trying to tell you anything. I'm just making conversation here. <laughs> no? And just at that point, the services started. And yep, as soon as the service was over, she got out of there without saying a word. I have never seen her or her family I have her since. So we inadvertently come out. I didn't know I was coming out to that woman, but I was. And um, we never know how people are going to react, but we allow them their reaction and step back from it. So it doesn't have anything to do with me. It has to do with them. So this has taught me a lot. And uh, yeah, this is not a lifestyle for wimps. <laughs> it does, it takes some courage, doesn't it? And um, so here I am again tonight. Mostly I don't know you people. You know way more about me now than I knew about you. And uh, I appreciate being able to come out to all of you in an um, accepting atmosphere. So thank you.